One of the challenges we face as individuals, families, organizations, or even as a nation is that of scarce resources. We often want to achieve big things, but we don't have the resources, neither do we have the means to achieve those big dreams. And so how do we go about using this much resource to achieve this big goal? I'm Reverend Kenny Sige, the senior pastor of Sitam Thika Road Church. Join me as we talk about how to achieve much using few resources. You're watching Sitam Church Online. The Bible, in the first eight verses of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, narrates the incident when Jesus' disciples were faced with the challenge of feeding a multitude of 4,000. The magnitude of the challenge was accentuated by the fact that the number 4,000 refers to the number of men. We're told that in verse 9, about 4,000 men were present. The women and children were not counted, but a reasonable estimate for the total number of people present is about 12 to maybe about 15,000. The second thing is that they were at a remote place. That's what the NIV Bible says. Other translations say it was a desolate place or a wilderness. And the third challenge that faced them was this. They only had seven loaves of bread that we're told in chapter 8 verse 5 and a few small fish. And so they had very meager resources. The story ends with two simple but amazing statements, both of which are from Mark chapter 8, verse 8. The first is this. The people ate and were satisfied. And the second is this. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And so from these seven loaves and a few fish, the 4,000 men, total of 12 to 15,000 people, ate and were satisfied, and there were leftovers. How did the disciples accomplish this great feat? We can draw three lessons from this. The first is the issue of Jesus' compassion for hungry multitudes. And this is central to this story. In Mark chapter 8, verse 2 and 3, we are told, and these are the words of Jesus, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have had nothing to eat. If I send them home, home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. The feeding of the multitude was a matter that concerned Jesus. It was at the center of God's heart. Jesus did not desire that the people should suffer in hunger and collapse as they went on their way home. Jesus desired that the people would be well fed and strong, strong enough to go to their homes. But notice, Jesus does not provide for the people alone or directly. He involves or he incorporates his disciples in providing food for the multitudes. God desires to use you and me as distributors of his blessings, the blessings that he has for his people. Let me ask you a question. Is whatever you're hoping to achieve in line with God's desires for his people? Do you perceive yourself as acting in concert with God to achieve this big thing? That is central to the success of achieving much with little. The second thing we learn from this story is this. Going to Jesus and trusting him despite the prevailing unfavorable environment is critical. In Mark chapter 8 verse 4, we are told that the place was remote. In other words, it was a desert, it was a wilderness, it was a desolate place. This feeding of the multitude happened in the context of this remote place. In fact, the New American Standard Bible says that it was remote. Some other version says it was a wilderness. 
Sometimes we face harsh environments, like difficult economic times, characterized by high inflation and unemployment rates, or difficult environments for business. God is never and shall never be limited by these economic indicators. He can prosper you in good times, he can prosper you in harsh times. The songwriter wrote a hymn a be with a beautiful message, and I believe it with all my heart. He wrote saying that the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. The third thing that we can learn from this miracle is this. Never underestimate the potential of what is in your hand. In Mark chapter 8 verse 6, we are told that Jesus told the crowds to sit down on the ground. And when he had taken seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they did so. Jesus took the seven loaves, blessed them, and handed them back to the disciples. And somehow they became more than sufficient for the multitudes. You see, in my and your hands, seven loaves and a few fish are just that. Seven loaves and a few fish. But once handed to Jesus, those seven loaves and a few fish fully satisfied 12 to 15,000 people and there were leftovers. So what do you have in your hand? Might it be a diploma or a degree certificate? in the midst of high unemployment rates. Maybe it's some little money, or maybe it's your salary that you've condemned as being insufficient to accomplish anything significant in this economy. Why don't you take it, present it to Jesus? Don't worry about the harsh environment. Just hand it to him and trust him. Let him bless it and hand it back to you. Let's see what God will enable you to accomplish in keeping with his will. Thank you for watching. Feel free to get in touch with us, give us feedback or ask a question through our social media platforms, that is Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Instagram. The details will appear at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to minister to you. You've been watching Sitam Church Online.